problem, we're going to work a Nernst equation. In addition to the Nernst equation, we're going to do a free energy, which can be done with the standard or non-standard cell. In this case, we'll do standard, which is minus NFE cell standard, F being Faraday's constant and being the number of moles. And we'll also calculate the equilibrium value, or K. So as we get started with this problem, the first thing that we need to look at is what is it we need? Well, we have two equations for the Nernst equation, and that's because if you take the constants and combine them, you can either use the regular log or you can use the natural log. But in both cases, we're going to need E cell standard and we're going to need the number of moles. And um, in order to do that, we'll use the reaction given. In order to do the cell potential, we'll need to use the uh, standard reduction potential chart as given. Now, you, there's a large one that I give my class, and then on tests, I truncate it and make it smaller so that you don't lose your mind looking for the particular one of interest. So, in order to get started, first thing we need to do is identify what's oxidized and reduced. So, to make it simple, I've gone ahead and rewritten the equation over the standard uh, reduction potential values because we'll need those when we do our cell. So, first things first, let's do oxidation numbers. So, we look at it, hydrogen here is 1 plus, oxygen is 2 minus, for water, those are standard, so that one's easy. Now, when we do the ClO3 minus, it's easier to start with one we know, which is oxygen, which is 2 minus. But there are three of them. So the oxygen component has a total charge of 6 minus. But the ion has a charge of 1 minus. So chlorine has to be 5 plus, so that when we add it to the 6 minus, we get 1 minus left over. On NO, oxygen again is 2 minus. Nitrogen then has to be 2 plus. We move over to the nitrate. Again, oxygen is 2 minus. There are three of them, so it's 6 minus. Has to equal 1 minus. So here, nitrogen is going to be 5 plus. Hydrogen here is 1 plus, And chlorine is in its elemental state, so it is 0. So if we look at this, Chlorine is changing from 5 plus to 0. And nitrogen is changing from 2 plus to 5 plus. So chlorine will have gained electrons, so it's reduced. Nitrogen will have lost electrons, so it's going to be eox. So when we look at it, and we look at our uh, standard potential chart, then we're going to find E red, which is uh, the chlorine, and it's down here at the bottom. So this one will be your E red. Now we go up and we look at the nitrogen and say, wait a minute, we've got an NO3 in the second one. We have an NO2 in the first one, so we're not interested in that. So the second equation here as NO2 as a reactant and NO as a product. However, that is not the same as our equation, so we're going to flip it, and that means that this EOX value comes out to be flipped as well, which means it's negative 0.956. So our E red value was positive 1.47 because it is an E red. So that means if we find our E cell, our E cell standard will be E ox standard plus E red, which means that it's equal to negative 0 0.956 plus 1.47. And again, these are all in volts, so our E cell will be 0.514 volts. Okay? We're going to go back to that in just a, to the previous problem in just a minute since we now have our value there. But while we're on this side, let's go ahead and look at the number of moles of electrons. 
So for chlorine, what we're doing is, is chlorine is transferring five moles of electrons, whereas nitrogen is transferring three moles of electrons. But when we look at our equation, then we have three chlorine atoms. And for nitrogen, we have five atoms. Now, we don't have to do both, but you can double check yourself. This is 15 and this is 15. So we know that we are transferring 15 moles of electrons. And some people think, oh, this is a little high. It's electrochemistry. You can transfer a lot more than that. So if we go back, we've done the math, so we know our value here is 5.14 volts. And I'm going to jump ahead and go ahead and put in our 15 moles of electrons uh, transferred there. Now, we skip B. So the question is, is this the reaction spontaneous as written? The answer is yes, because E cell is positive when it's spontaneous. Now that can be either standard or non-standard, so that doesn't matter. So then that brings us to D. What is Gibbs free energy? Well, we said that Gibbs free energy, we're going to do standard, is equal to minus NFE cell. So we'll come down here and do D. Um, and delta G is equal to N. 15 moles of electrons. Faraday's constant, which is 9.6485 coulombs per one mole of electrons, times E cell, which is 0.514 volts. So the units will cancel out because volt is in uh, coulombs is joule seconds, and volts is joules. Um, Coulomb, and so it, it cancels itself out, and we end up with negative seven four three eight nine nine point three five joules. Now, for those people who like smaller numbers, you can record it as negative seven four three eight. Whoops, point eight nine nine. 3, 5 kilojoules. Doesn't matter which way you put it. And again, the cell was spontaneous because it was positive, which makes the free energy negative. Um, spontaneous, so we'll go with negative 7, 4, 3, 8, 9, 9.35 joules. Okay, so we're good there. Uh, the next one is, what is the equilibrium constant for the reaction? So, if we look at our equation sheet, we could do this with an Ernst equation and adapt it back because, remember, at equilibrium, uh, E cell is 0 and Q is K, but we've already done that and adapted that, so we either get K is equal to E to the negative E cell, excuse me, to the positive E cell. Um, e cell times N divided by 0 0.02569 or we could do it with K is equal to 10 to the E cell times N over 0. 0.0592. Again, what's the difference? One is a base 10, that would be the 10, and one is um, the based upon the natural log, which is second. So that's the E. So it doesn't matter which one you put in. Um, the easiest thing is to go ahead and plug in your numbers. Remember, we have E cell. Uh, be e to the 0.514 times 15 divided by 0 0.02569, which translates to e to the 300.1168. 
So K comes out equal to 2.1830 times 10 to the 130, <laughs> which is a very large number. Or if you do it on the other side, we end up with 10 to the uh, 0.514 times 15 moles divided by 0 0.0592. So, on this one, it's 10 raised to the 130.2365. So, over here, K comes out equal to 1.7238 times 10 to the 130. Now, don't worry because the 2.18 versus the 1.72 are slightly different. Because your exponent is 130. They're the same, so there's just a slight variation in the scheme of things that's not much. So it doesn't matter which one you do, I will grade both accordingly. I'll just look at which one you used, and in my key, I will write both. So we're good to go on that one. So we've made it A through E. Now we're left with F, which actually brings us back to the original Nernst equation. So we're doing F. Well, the one thing that's standard in both forms is the number of moles, the E cell, and Q. So let's go ahead and set up Q. Well, remember, Q is um, got the same form as K, so it's the products of the reactants. So we'll have NO3 minus to the fifth times H plus squared times chlorine to the three halves power divided by water drops out because it's pure substance ClO3 minus is cubed times NO to the fifth. Now you're looking at it and go, wait, some of these are gases, some of them are aqueous. But if you'll notice this little note right here, atmosphere is the same as molarity when you're doing K or Q problems. So I know it's a little weird, but go with it and use it accordingly. So here Q is going to be equal to 0 0.066. And this is going to be molarity to the fifth times 0 0.044 molar, because that's the hydrogen squared. Uh, the chlorine is 0 0.0053 um, atmospheres raised to the three halves power divided by. 1.88 molar cubed times um, the NO is 1.32 atmospheres raised to the fifth power. Now, be careful when you put this through your calculator because what actually ends up is you end up with Q is equal to 3.5. 1, 3, 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So that's my Q value. So for E cell equal to E standard uh, plus 0 0.0592 over 15 uh, times the log of 3.5 one three one times ten to the minus fourteen. Then remember the E is point five one four volts. You end up with zero point five six one zero oh volts. If you do E cell is equal to zero point five one four volts. But this time you use 0 0.02569 over 15 moles times the natural log of 3.513 times 10 to the minus 14th, 
then what you end up with is 0 0.5671 volts. Now, notice that they're slightly different because one's using log and one's using natural log, but they don't differ until the third place after the decimal. The other thing is, is notice that in this case we had a whole lot more reactants, uh, 1.88 moles and 1.32 which were larger than one, so our voltage is slightly higher than um, our standard cell. So it doesn't matter again which one you put in. I'm going to put in the first one uh, to get it done. Now, the math is a little tricky when you get to part F. Well, and E. It's a matter of you and your calculator being friends, not enemies. So make sure you take a little extra time and double check working a couple of these problems so that you understand how your calculator works. If you work it and you don't get the right answer, please don't hesitate to come uh, ask me to show you and I will work it out on your calculator. I'm familiar with most calculators. Some of them take a little bit, but we'll work it through. Because if you can't get your calculator to function right, you're going to have a hard time, especially with all these little exponents and natural logs and regular logs, etc. But this is a Nernst equation thrown in with an equilibrium and a Gibbs free energy problem.